I'm sure you guys have seen this famous braided balayage technique everywhere, so I wanted to take you along while I show you my version. This mannequin has old traditional highlights and lowlights and a little bit of an ombre effect, so I'm gonna teach you how to drop that dimension back in. This technique does work best when you're doing some kind of root melt, so I am gonna be applying a color to her scalp matching her natural level. I am starting this parting just like any other color application with a T parting. I'm going down the center of her head and behind her ears. Having clean partings is essential as this sectioning creates the foundation of the color we're about to apply. I'm gonna be using five separate sectioning clips for this application. I like having clips in two different colors so that I can differentiate between the highs and the lows. As always, make sure you're protecting yourself during this service and wear your gloves. On her scalp and in her low light, I am going to be using Redken Color Gels in 6N just to match her natural and to have more opaque coverage with this new growth application and the low lights. I'm applying this new growth color an inch and a half down everywhere. Make sure you're maintaining clean sectioning throughout this process. I like starting from the bottom, it's just easiest for me to apply. I'm taking one inch sections up her head and gonna be taking pretty thick weaves. I'm gonna be holding a section between my fingers, picking up weaves and then separating what I just picked up and hanging it over the clips on either side. Everything I drop out on the bottom is going to stay there and that's gonna be the highlight of this section. The braided balayage technique is really fun because it basically breaks down what you're doing in each section into these big workable sections so you get the work done a lot faster. As you're picking up your low light, you can be aware of what you want to be a highlight and a low light. You can leave out some of the sections on either side of the hairline so you still have a face frame when they push their hair forward. Because you're taking bigger weaves here, make sure you maintain your tension and clean up each section as you go. I like alternating between each section doing three, four, or five pickups to maintain variation. You can see the bricklay pattern forming in the back as I work up the head, but we're not gonna be braiding anything just yet. So after I pick up the hair, I just simply split it in two and then hook it over the sides. You're gonna continue this sectioning all the way up the head. Because you're gonna be working with multiple formulas here, remember to keep a towel nearby to wipe your hands between sections. This is where the different color clips come into play. I'm gonna be clipping away those low light sections I put to the side with pink clips and the highlights with the white clips. As I work on the side of the head, instead of picking up the low lights and splitting them in half, the low lights are gonna to go towards the back of her head and the highlights are gonna stay in the front. As I'm picking up that low light, I like to maintain the same method of hooking it over that pink clip to keep everything super organized. And remember, as you're picking up, just be conscious of what you're leaving out because that's gonna be the highlight. I left out a couple extra highlights right around her face. Compared to traditional highlight low light sectioning, this is flying by and the next part is gonna be even easier. You can make these pickups as big or as small as you like. I'm doing pretty big weaves to have a higher contrast between the highlights and the low lights on the finished product. You can see as we finish that section, all the hair in the front is gonna be the highlight and I'm just joining in that low light section with the pink clip in the corner. Now, once you have this highlight portion sectioned out, you can do a bunch of different things with it. I've seen a lot of this technique used with just a lighter toner formula, but I'm gonna be doing something a little different. Once you're done dividing everything up, you should have five really clean sections. This is where the depth comes in. I'm gonna be taking those two corner sections that I pinned away using the pink clips and apply her root formula from roots to ends. Making sure to fully, fully saturate because this is a bigger section, don't be scared of breaking it up to make sure it's fully saturated. You can apply this part however you like. I've had some stylists use a toner bottle and some stylists use a bowl and a brush. And this is why it's braided balayage. Once you're done applying that section, braid it all together to keep it out of the way. If you're working with something a little more high contrast and you feel more comfortable isolating that section with a foil or a plastic please do so. Remember to give yourself some grace. While you're practicing new techniques, it may take you an extra second to get the hang of it, so formulate accordingly so that if your formula has to sit a little bit longer, it doesn't go too dark. And this is what we're working with. We have those front two face framing sections and the back center section completely untouched for now. This is where I'm changing it up. I grabbed my favorite lightener and mixed it at a one to two ratio so it's a little more slippery and my favorite teasing comb, which actually happens to be a brush. So because we have such a good base of her highs and lows that are in there already, I just wanna pop the ends up. So I'm holding my hands really, really low on that section and brushing everything up just into the midsection, making sure not to push it up into that root color we applied before. What's left in my hands is a little bit of the residual money piece sectioning and the darkness behind it. I'm using that lightener with a low, low developer and over directing that section towards her face so that when we brush it back, we get that teardrop sectioning. In the back, I want it to be even more subtle, so I'm going to be painting less and holding my brush even lower before backcombing this section. Because you're pushing all the baby hairs out of the way, all you're gonna be holding in your hand is those long, strong hairs that can handle a little lightening. Remember to always paint these sections in Bs or Ws, and if you decide to feather up at the top of the foil, do not touch the tees as this can result in splotchiness in your highlight. If this was a traditional highlight, I would simply fold up the foil, but because we have different saturation and feathering happening, I'm gonna be laying one right on top of it. 
there's a little Debbie under there. This is our finished processing shot. I like to comb out the back comb because it was really, really lightly brushed up before we shampoo. This technique can be used so many ways to achieve so many different looks. And like I said, it's a lot simpler, a lot quicker and cleaner than applying low lights and highlights throughout the entire head individually. This would definitely be my go-to technique if my guests wanted to go darker, air quotes, but didn't want to feel like I dumped the same color all over her head, losing all the dimension. My favorite thing about the braided balayage technique is that you can apply this root using a permanent or a demi-permanent color. So this can be a really easy way to change up your every six week root touch-up appointments. I love how you can pick out the faux money piece that I created simply by leaving out more highlights around her face. Overall, this is a really simple, easy technique to learn. It'll be a lot quicker in the salon once you get the hang of it, and you can apply it to a lot of different heads of hair. So once you try it out on your own, make sure to tag me, and I can't wait to see it.